So if you clicked on this video, you either have less than 45 Bs, or you're not good at reading titles. But in this video, I'll be giving you guys tips and tricks to get to endgame as fast as possible. So considering most of you have less than 45 Bs, you guys are probably around early game or mid game. And in this video, I'll be giving you the perfect tips to become as good of a player in as short of a time as possible. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. The more likes that this video gets is the more B-Swarm players that will see this video. So if you want to help out a fellow B-Swarm player, just drop a like. But yeah, other than that intro, let's just get right into it. So at the time that I'm making this video, I made a video similar to this around 8 months ago. But I decided to update that tutorial since so much new stuff has been added to B-Swarm. Now this first tip might seem a bit obvious, but so many people ignore the fact that you can do this. So my biggest tip for progressing below 45 Bs as fast as possible would be to grind the hourly drops. So stuff like puff shrooms that spawn every 15th and 45th minute of every hour, meteor showers, memory matches, all the stuff that has a timer, I would grind. Especially meteor shower. For me, meteors aren't really worth it. It's more of a waste of time and a waste of energy. Considering I have so many resources, like, I don't need to grind meteors anymore. But when you're early and mid-game, especially below 45 Bs, you can get so much useful stuff from meteors. You can get tickets, moon charms, all the important stuff, star jellies, and maybe even atomic treats or myth gags, although I've never seen one. You always have a chance, you never know. So yeah, grind hourly drops and just make sure you get the important collectors. Especially glue, because glue is very hard to come by. At every single stage, it doesn't even matter if you're endgame, glue is hard to get. So don't be lazy like me, get the glue dispenser every day, and enjoy your infinite glues. The next tip I will give you is to optimize how well you use your resources. So if you're trying to craft something expensive, maybe the coconut cancer, coconut boots, doesn't matter. You realize that at the mid-game stage of Beast Worm, especially when you're trying to get all the expensive gear for the first time, it is very hard to get resources. The resources I'm talking about are glitter, extracts, glue, oil, enzymes, tropical drinks, all that stuff. It is very hard to get, especially if you do not have access to a macro. So let me tell you how to optimize resources well. Until you get a good hive and you can make at least like 5 billion honey per boost, that's minimum. I'd say do not waste your resources for boosting. Maybe if you're doing a code, which I don't recommend at early game, even though I wasted every single code I have as an early game noob myself, I do not recommend you waste your resources just for grinding or boosting. Like, I wouldn't even call it a boost unless you make it 50 billion plus honey. So just save your resources unless you have a bunch of materials you can craft with. And especially treat your glitters and glues well because you're gonna need them. You're gonna need them for the gummy mask and the gummy boots if you don't already own both. Glue is like your treasure. Same with glitter. Glitter is probably even harder to get than glue because you can't get it for free from a dispenser. Maybe stuff like enzymes, tropical drinks, and oil, it's much easier to get than the other resources, but I still don't recommend you use them. So this next tip will help you optimize your resources as well as possible. So what I mean by resources are extracts, glitter, glue, oil, enzymes, all that stuff. Pretty much anything that gives you a buff while grinding or boosting, I call it a resource. So the only resources I would really use as an early slash mid game player before like 35, 40 Bs, maybe even 45, the only stuff I'd use are stuff that you can get back. So replenishable resources like micros, coconuts, or the gigs, although they're not too useful, jelly beans, even loaded dice. If you're chilling out 25 loaded dice, just pop one or two for a boost. But please do not waste your precious resources as a noob, because it might be very hard to get all your resources back if you burn through all of them. And especially treat your glues and glitters well, because those two are the hardest to get. Especially if you do not have the gummy mask and gummy boots, just save your glues, save the glitter. Might be tempting to use, although I did it a lot as a mid-game noob myself. Just don't do it. It's not that difficult. And especially treat your glues and glitters well, because those two resources are the hardest to come by in my opinion, as an early slash mid-game player before like 50 Bs. Until you can craft like a crap ton of resources, I would recommend you ration them carefully. So especially your glitters and glues, use them wisely. Next tip I have is grind your black bear quests. So anyone with more than 45 Bs has definitely finished the black bear quest line, which at the end gives you a myth gig. But if you have not completed the black bear quest line, please do it. Black bear is so slept on. He is probably one of the best bears because he probably gives you your first myth gig and you are able to get your first mythic bee from that. Even if you already have one or two mythic bees and you haven't finished the quest line, just do it, man. It's good to get it over with. And maybe you can even start grinding the infinite quests which repeat forever, and there is no end in sight. 
so if you have nothing to do, just let the Black Bear quest chill in the background. Or if you're very close to completing one, just finish it. Get that extra couple hundred million pollen. And yeah, same goes with Spirit Bear. Although with Spirit Bear, you can't just do it in the background. I recommend you guys grind this. Because if you don't actively focus on Spirit Bear and you want to progress in Bee Swarm, that's not going to happen. Spirit Bear is a type of bear which you have to dedicate yourself fully to. Just like BBM. Like, look at this quest. I've been doing this for like a week now. And I've fully dedicated my life to this in the past week. So you have to do the same with Spirit Bear. You cannot be lazy when doing her quest because you're going to get nowhere. So just man up and do the quest. Unless you're a girl. Then you can just let people bring all the stuff to you for free. And that's a joke. Don't cancel me guys, I'm not Andrew Tate. The next tip I have, and this is something I talk about a lot. Please, please, please save your codes until you're good at the game, especially the important ones. And by important code, I mean something that can make you the most amount of honey. So the codes that I would use are the ones that only give you loot. So stuff that gives you tickets, honey, although you don't get much honey from them anyway. Maybe gumdrops, micros, all that stuff. Pretty nice if you ask me. There are very good codes, especially for starting out with minimal bees. But the better codes that give you x15 wins and that give you honey day buff, please just save it until you're better at the game. I feel like every single person who's played Swarm is guilty of using a very good code as a noob. Like, tell me in the comments, guys. I'm sure everyone's done it. There's two types of people in this world. Those who wasted codes as a noob and liars. But yeah, you get my point. Don't be stupid with your codes. The next tip, it's not really a tip, but it's just a suggestion from me. I'll be telling you guys the best type of hive to have, in my opinion, as a mid slash early game player with less than 45 bees. So the type of hive I like to have on all my accounts when I start over is a mixed hive. It's kind of in the name, it's very self-explanatory. You just want to have a bunch of mixed bees. So I'd keep at least one of every single gifted bee that you get. So if you get something like Bomber Bee or Brave Bee, although most endgame hives don't actually use those bees, just keep them in your hive because it's going to help you while grinding a lot. It's going to be easier to track for the Supreme Serum Lit until you actually get that. And it's just a good policy to have until you get the SSA. The SSA being the Supreme Serum Lit. With the Supreme Serum Lit, you can finally choose your hive color based on one of the six passives that you get. Although there's not actually six hive colors, there are six passives. So until you get the SSA, which requires 40 gifted bees, just keep one of every single gifted bee. And the duped bees that I really like to keep are the Carpenter Bee and the Baby Bee. Because Baby Bee, especially if you're free to play, you get that Baby Love. And even if you're not free to play and you have Bear Bee, that times 2 pollen is insane from Baby Love. And the reason Carpenters are good is because they give you Honey Marks and Pollen Marks. So Honey Mark pretty much spawns a mark in the field and it converts your honey. So it's like having a hive inside a field. Just like this. And these are pollen marks, and they give you extra pollen. So just from these three marks standing in the field, I get times 2.5 pollen. So obviously, you can see it's quite good. I'm a huge advocate for carps and baby bees as a mid-game player. And music bees. I would recommend you keep three music bees. Not more, not less. It's just three is the best amount to have. Don't ask why I have two. I don't know myself. I'd keep every single mythic bee you get, because obviously they're not too easy to get. Now next is event bees. If you're watching this video, there's a high chance you already bought every single event bee there is to offer in Bee Swarm. But I'd still watch this part of the video, it's quite helpful. So pretty much there are a bunch of event bees. I don't even know how many. Too many to count. There are a total of 11 event bees in Bee Swarm, and I totally didn't count that 10 seconds ago. But I'm going to be giving guys the order in which you should get all your event bees, so I'm not going to make it long and difficult. I'd say Cobalt and Crimson first, then Tabby Bee, then Festa Bee, then Photon Bee. Puppy Bee if you really want to, but it's not required. I wouldn't really buy the Cub Buddy for tickets because it's a whole 2000 I just spent 6 bucks on Cub Buddy from the Robux shop. But if you're not free to play cringe, you can just wait till Bees miss. You get a free Cub Buddy anyway for finishing all of the quests. From Bee Bear, of course. This man right here. This, this monster of a bear. I hate him. His quests are a bit too difficult for me. But then we get to Event Bees that you cannot actually unlock for tickets. You get Gummy Bee, so Gummy Bee it's very easy to get, especially as an early game player. I'd say you can probably unlock it before you get to 40 bees. So the tip I have for unlocking Gummy Bee fast is just to not use your gumdrops, man. It's that easy. It is that simple. Just put your gumdrops away. Unlike me, don't have it in your hotbar, and you won't use gumdrops. And maybe even craft a few occasional gumdrops in the blender. But don't speed it up, it's a waste. Only I can speed things up with my 11,000 tickets. Windy Beat's also quite self-explanatory, but I don't want you guys to, to be donating your first spirit pedal to the Wind Shrine. Buy the pedal wand with your first spirit pedal, please, because you're gonna struggle on the second row of spirit requests to get your second spirit pedal if you donate it to the Wind Shrine. 
So just donate your second spirit pedal to the wind shrine, get pedal wand with your first, and most obviously get the pedal belt with your third spirit pedal. Now this video might cause some controversy, but digital B. If you're watching this while the digital B is in the shop, well lucky you. If you want to have a future B swarm, buy this B right now. It's 2500 Robux, which might seem like a lot, but digital B is pretty much impossible to get unless you get 50 Bs. The reason for that is every single drive is super expensive. And to actually buy digital B, you need 5 of every single drive. Maybe your red, white, and blue drives are not too difficult to get. I can get max of them in like 30 minutes. But that's going to be a lot more difficult if you don't have a high level hive with 50 Bs. And most difficultly, it's going to be the glitch drives, which are going to be the most difficult. Because one glitch drive requires 100 cogs, 5 red drives, 5 white, 5 white drives, and 5 blue drives. Personally, I will never craft a glitch drive in my life while playing this game. Some people might, but I think it's a waste. But if you're max on every single drive, I guess you might as well. Especially if you're grinding towards digital B. But I guess the only way you can really get digital B without Robux is just grind, grind, and lastly grind. Did I say grind already? I might have mentioned this before in this video, but... Once you unlock Gummy B, get the glue dispenser every single day. The better your goo badge is, the more glue you get, I think. I've been playing this game for 5 years and I'm not sure myself. So make sure you're getting your glue daily, because it's gonna be all worth it in the end. Wait, I gave Gummy Bear a present on accident. I didn't even mean to do that, dude. I didn't even- bro, what? Well, that's kinda stupid. I was gonna do it for a video, although this is also a video. Okay, so I did it for a video in the end. Nice. Speak of the devil, it's a gummy sprout. Yeah, sprouts are also quite good, but when I was progressing in B-Swarm, I usually ignored sprouts unless they were rare or above. Because basic sprouts or common sprouts, whatever you want to call them, they are pretty useless. Max they can give you is what, like a ticket, two tickets, even not to stretch. Rare sprouts are good because you get a couple tickets and you even get silver eggs sometimes. Silver eggs are very common from the rare sprouts, so if you get one, don't tell me to put it in the lucky moments video because it's not lucky. Sorry to ruin your hopes and dreams, Billy. Now this tip, once more, extremely controversial and political, and I might get cancelled for this, but if you do not have macros in B-Swarm, or you do not have the ability to macro on like a laptop or tablet, any sort of macro that you can get to AFK the game for you, it is going to be extremely hard to progress. Because every single person who's on the leaderboard, I'm talking every single person, has macroed before, and currently macros. Because it is impossible to progress in the game without macros. Because I'd say, your life without macros is going to be like 5 times harder than if you do have macros. Because macros can automatically give you tickets, glue, they can kill mobs for you, they can do your quests for you. They can make you honey bro, they can make you trillions and quadrillions of honey. If you do not know how to macro in B-Swarm, I have a great video that I made, it's in the description, probably the first link in the description. But if you do not have the ability to macro, or you play on something like a phone or a tablet, I think there's this strat which I call the spoon meta, where you literally put a spoon on your tablet screen or phone screen, and it's like a free auto clicker and you don't disconnect. Try it out, tell me if it works in the comments. I saw it as a meme on reddit, so please tell me if it's true. But what I would recommend you guys do if you don't have macros is AFK something that is AFKable without macros. So stuff like the sum snail, which you can just literally put your phone down on the couch while you're watching TV or something, tap the screen once every 15 minutes, and the sum snail dies automatically by your bees slaving away and attacking it. Give your bees a break guys, bees deserve love, save the bees. Another thing that you can afk is the wolf clock. It might seem a bit more repetitive because you're not actually progressing at all, you're only getting 1, 2, 3, or 5 tickets every single hour. Or you can just afk in the corner of a field, you don't even need a macro for this. Oh and for my fellow B-Swarm players who play on the PC or laptop, I have this free auto clicker for you. Now just go out of full screen. Hold your left click so you swing your tool, drag it up to the white thing at the top, and you can full screen back in. And it's a free auto clicker. Like, I'm clapping my hands right now, I'm not touching my mouse, and it's definitely not your sister. But it's a free way to relax your hand from holding onto the mouse for 28 hours a day. And the most important thing about playing any single game, like, no matter if it's Roblox or not Roblox, B Swarm or not B Swarm, just have fun. The point of these games is to have fun or make money, one of the two. So make sure you don't get too burnt out while playing this game, because at the end of the day, it's only a video game, so... Fun is the second most important thing to have in any video game. Riches is the first, obviously. But one way to enjoy your gameplay more is to either talk to a friend while you're playing, play with a friend in the VIP, or just join a group chat, or just join like a group call on Discord or something. If you guys want to talk to some people, 
join my Discord, it's somewhere in the description. Most of my Discord is quite friendly, except a few that aren't, so you can find some people to talk to there. Or another thing I like to do is just watch YouTube videos or Netflix or HBO Max. Anything that entertains you, maybe even a podcast. One way to do this on the laptop if you do not have two monitors, once more, just zoom out and drag this little window to the edge of the screen, just like this. And now you can watch both my videos and play B-Storm at the same time. Very beautiful. Oh yeah, you can make my video bigger if you want. Make my video even thicker than it already is. Oh, 16k likes? I said for every like that that video gets, I'm gonna waste one ticket, so... I think I owe you guys a few more tickets wasted. Is that good? I'm poor now. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video or helped you out in any way, shape, or form, I don't even know why I said that. Although b Swarm is mostly weird shapes, like what even is this? Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. It really does help support my channel. And once more, if you drop a like, maybe an extra b Swarmer will see this video and this will help them out too. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.